All right, good morning. Uh, yeah, WebEx changed their interface, so I don't know how to pin myself anymore. I'm gonna have to figure it out um, later, um, but hopefully you can see me. Um, if not, just let me know. Uh, anyhow, um, so over the Thanksgiving break, I did reevaluate the way I'm giving assignments and I feel like I'm giving too much time on assignments to allow you to, to procrastinate. So I just want you to know that I'm tying up on the deadlines. For example, I taught lesson 1-8 on Monday and it is due tonight. Um, and so I'm giving you three days to do lesson 1-8, which means you're only doing nine problems per day. So I assigned problems on Monday. If it's due tonight, that means you're only required to do nine problems per day. So stay on top of stuff because I'm not going to be giving you the time I've been giving you. So I'm going to tighten things up. Um, so the first thing I want to do today, um, I want to take I want to take questions on one eight, and then I'm going to teach one nine. Okay, so. Um, the reason why you haven't heard me talking about exams, because the next exam is going to be four sections. It's going to be lesson one, um, six, one, seven, and one, nine. We'll be having an exam after one, nine. Okay. But first, um, let me take any questions you have on lesson one, eight. I taught it on Monday. Um, you should be done with the assignment. I'm only giving nine problems per day. So, um, anybody want to ask me any questions on um, lesson? Okay, so in one eight, you had to find an inverse. Um, you had to do two compositions to verify inverses, and you also had to graph the function, the inverse. So this lesson it required previous. So that's the thing about math, you know, like in history, you don't have to know about the Civil War to the test right on World War One. But in math, if you don't know how to find a composition, if you don't know how to do transformations, then this will be hard because it's all building on previous things that we've done. So. Also, in 1.8, we looked at the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test tells you that if the function passes on a line, the inverse is a function too. So anybody want to ask me any questions about 1.8 before I teach lesson 1.9? You do 23. 23 on 1.8, okay. Okay, 23 on 1 8. All right, number 23 is f of x equals the square root of x. Okay, I'm going to read the directions. So for A, they want us to find the inverse. Okay, now you guys, um, if you're just joining me, WebEx interface, so I don't know how myself so i can't see anything um so you let me know if you can't see the board okay all right here we go so to find the inverse remember that you change f of x to y and you switch x and y the next thing we do is solve for y so the is how do you get them out of there so what you should be asking yourself is how do we undo a square root? So the way we square root is we square both sides. And as long as you square both sides, you're okay. Squaring a square root means that you're creating square root of y times square root of y, which means a y gets to come out. So that might be where you got stuck. And then this turns out to be X. Here's the deal. When you square both sides of something, 
you could create extraneous things. And so um, want you to, they want you to verify now. Now listen to this. I'm just gonna show you on a side note. We know square root looks like this. So this answer isn't exactly right because we know the inverse cannot be the complete parabola. So the question is, what should we do? And what we should do is we should restrict the domain to um, X being greater than or equal to zero. A little tricky. This is one eight number twenty three, right? So this was a little tricky. Oh God, I can't circle it yet because we've got to change the notation. So the notation would be f inverse of x is equal to x squared. With x being restricted. Like I said, um, square root. The inverse is not going to be the whole parabola. It's going to be part of it. And it's the part that's to the right of zero. The part on the left has to be eliminated. Okay, do you want me to do the verified part of this problem or no? Hello? There's a verify part in part B. Do you want that or not? Yeah. So you could write it as f of g of x, and we said that g of x is f inverse. And then we have to do the for g of f of x, and they both have to equal x. So let's see here. So g, which is this guy, right? F function so that worked and then over here you put in a function which is square root of x and that becomes the x of the g function where's this is the g function. and remember what I just got when you square a square root, one gets to come out. So this did prove that these are inverses and that this is the right answer. So remember what I said, that F inverse is sometimes denoted by G. So if you write F inverse or G, we know that G, we're looking at the inverse in these problems. Okay, I'm not sure who asked for this. Was this um, was this Jerry or Mark or whoever asked for this? Are you good to go? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody want me to work anything else in um, one eight? This right here was finding an inverse that was verified. This was tricky. She had to restrict the domain. Draw a picture of square root of X. You can tell what the, remember the inverse has to flip over the identity. So we knew we had to restrict the parabola for X greater than or equal to zero. Okay, does anybody want me to work anything else in lesson one eight? Uh, number 19. It's 
quadratic. No, it's a cubic. And um, they want us to do the same thing. So we to find the inverse. So change f of x to y. Which x and y. Solve for y, right? Yes. Okay, so we're going to do the same. So instead of square root of both sides, we take the cube root of both sides. It's here. If the cube root of a cube, one gets to come out. And this is the cube root of x. Did you follow that, Mark? Yeah. So when you solve for y, this would be the cube root of x and a minus, don't put it under the radical, it's minus two out here. Inverse then is the cube root of x and the minus two is y. That is the correct answer. Do you want me to verify it or no? Uh, yeah. Okay, so when you verify it, you're going to do f of g of x and make sure it equals x. You're going to do g of f of x and make sure it equals x. So the first thing is put the g function in. So this is, remember, this is a g function. It's the cube root of x with a minus 2 outside. You're going to put that into the f function, which is something cubed. And the something is what? It's the cube root x minus for some reason right. The function is this, and we're putting it into the f function. Oh. Careful. So we're putting the F function is this something plus two quantity cubed. And the something is cube root of X minus two. So those twos cancel. And then you end up with the cube root of X quantity cubed which is x. Wow. Didn't think I was going to get it there for a minute. All right. So bring down the g function. What goes inside is the f function, which is um, x plus 2 quantity cubed. That becomes the x function which is something, cube root of something, minus two outside. So what's the something? It would be x plus two quantity cubed. And so the cube root of a cube is x plus two, and there's the minus two, which cancels. Tricky stuff here. Got to really do your notation. Um, you got to really pay attention to what you're doing. Um, if you don't have the correct notation, you won't be able to verify. So, Mark, to make this or write it down and make sure you can follow the steps correctly. If not, you want to contact me. Okay? Yeah, I got it. Okay, can I erase this then? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to teach this, teach this lesson because I have to get through through it. Then you're going to on your so. Um, this is a a shorter period on Wednesday, so let me get started. So in lesson one nine, um, there are five objectives, and I'm going to teach them all right now. This is lesson one nine. 
And this is easier than some of the lessons we've done in the recent past. So the first thing we're going to look at is the distance formula. So the distance formula was introduced, I hope, in Algebra 1. Um, it's a very popular formula, which most people know. It's x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared. So basically, if they give you two points on the line, so that's a point, left one up four, and right two, you can find the distance between those two points. So that's what the distance formula does for you. It, it helps you find the distance between two points. So here we go. We're going to call this guy x sub 1, y sub 1. And this guy's going to be x sub 2, y sub 1. And those are just, they're just naming point 1 and point 2. So the distance between those two points is a big radical. And it's just going to be um, 3, the negative 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared. So what you get here is you get 4 squared plus negative 6 quantity squared, which is the square root of 16 plus 6. Can you guys still see the boards? Which is the square root of 52. Prime factorization is simplify this. So remember how to do this. I take out a two would be 26. Take two would be 13. So you have two times two times 13, which is two radical 13. Now, in the math course, you're going to leave it as two times radical 13. If a person in real life wanted to know the answer, you would put this on the calculator and you would say two times radical 13, it's going to be like um, six point something. But you, you could put this on the calculator and give somebody an approximation if they want to know the real life distance between two points. So this is pretty easy, but you got to follow the formula. There's minuses in the formula. We're going to be minus a negative. Now, I'm only going to do these to make sure I get through the lesson. So anybody who have any questions about this, I'm not going to do another one right now. Okay, that was the first objective. Okay, the second objective is finding the midpoint. So what this guy, what, it, what this is, you guys, is the midpoint is the point in the middle of a line segment. So there is a formula, but I don't really use it. I'm going to show you what I do, but I'm going to write down the formula for it. So the midpoint is here, first of all. And what you're going to do is get it. You're going to add up the X's and divide by two, and you're going to add up the Y's and divide by two. That is going to give you the midpoint. Now, I don't memorize that formula. Let me just show you what I do. They're going to give you two points on a line. And now we're going to find the midpoint, what's in the midpoint of those two of, the, of that line. And watch what I'm going to do.
Remember, this is X sub one, Y sub one. This is X sub two, Y sub two. So this is what I do. I just add up the X's and divide by two, and I add up the Y's and divide by two, that's it. You have to simplify it, of course. So this would be two divided by two, and this two divided by two, which is really coincidental. So our midpoint is right one up one. So pretty easy. Find the midpoint, add up the X's and divide by two, add up the Y's and divide. Make sure you write it as an ordered pair. Any questions about this one? If we have time at the end, I would be happy to work more problems, but I'm just trying to get through the lesson. Um, right. All right, the third objective has to do with the circle. So this is the first time we've looked at the circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to write the standard form of a circle. So let me show you what it is. So instead of having an X squared now or an X cubed, we're going to have two squares. So this is what it looks like. X minus H quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. And this hk pair is the, that is the center of the circle. And r is the rate is the um, radius. So put that in a box. So they're going to ask you to standard form and I'm going to write that. So write the standard form of the circle with the center zero, zero, and they'll say radius two or something like that. So this is simple. Just plug it in. So remember that the center is HK. So just plug them in. So this would be X minus H quantity squared plus Y minus K quantity squared equals R squared. That's it. So this would just be X squared plus one equals four. So now if we, if we see the sum of two squares like this, um, the center's at zero, zero. So that, that's it. So let's try another problem that's a little more difficult, not that much more. So they're gonna say once again, write the stamp circle. You see the whole board? Yeah. So this time they're saying the ten, the up two, up three, and they're saying R equals four. So they wrote it a little bit different, but who cares? They can't fool us. We know how to do this. So the center is HK. And we're just going to plug it into the formula again. Four is x minus negative two quantity squared. So see how I didn't mess up on the negative? It's x minus a negative two quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. So this would be x plus quantity squared plus Y minus three quantity squared equals 16. 
minute, you guys, they're going to this and they're going to ask for the center and the radius. So remember that the form, just like all the other forms we looked at, the quadratic, the cubic, the absolute value, the cube, these all have a minus in it too. So not right to. This would be X minus, this is left two, and this is up three. So left two, up three, left two, up three, and this is R squared. Okay, so let's go backwards now. So this was pretty easy. Um, just put the center in, put the radius in, and you got your equation. So let's go backwards now. This is easy also. They're gonna, they're gonna give you the center. And this is objective four, by the way. They're gonna give in the center and the radius. Write an equation in standard form. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the equation. So it's a roadmap. So the equation is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. Should have written it down. I didn't write down the problem. The pro Let me write down the problem. Usually I write down the problem and wrote down the formula. I'm going to erase it and do it. Sorry. I'm going to do it the way I normally I do it. So here's the problem. So the problem is x minus 2 quantity squared plus y plus 4 quantity. This is given. Okay, they want us to find the center and the radius. So the equation looks like this, right? x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity equals r squared. So this would be x minus two quantity squared would be y minus a negative four in the form equals r squared. This is nine. So if we, they're asked the center. So the center be right to down four and if we wanted to find the radius the radius squared is nine which means if we take the square root of both sides or minus three the radius is a length it's now the reason why I'm showing this work is because was some weird number like 15, you would want to make sure right, r squared equals 15 and take the square root of 15. Showing you how to do it if this number is a weird, not a perfect square. If you have questions, make sure you ask me. So now what we're going to do is um, If they ask you to graph, I want to show you how easy it is to graph a circle. It's easier than all the other ones. So watch. So the center, you got to get the center right, right to down four. 
So from the origin, you go right to down the center. Now from the center, we're going to go up three and put a point. We're going to go right three and put a point. We're going to go down three and put a point. And we're going to go left three and put a point. And there's your circle. Now, ask for the domain and range. So what would the domain be, you guys? Where does the graph exist left and right? Negative one. Five. Yes, exactly. Good, Mark. Nate, left one to five, right. Okay, what's the range? The range would be this, right? You put the smaller number on the left. What would the range be? This negative, is the range, right? Go ahead. Negative one. Negative seven up to one. Yes, good job. And somebody asked me last period, can these be switched? And the answer is no. The smaller number, see negative seven is smaller than negative one on the number line. So remember that when you write interval notation, the smaller number has to go on the left. So this is, let's look at the domain. The domain negative one to five range is negative seven to negative one closed. Okay, before I erase this, does anybody want to ask me any questions about Finding the center, the radius, or graphing. All right, I have one more objective. And then if you guys, if there's time for questions on any of these objectives, then you can ask me. Okay. So for five, we're going to convert something called general form. And I'll show you that in a minute. To standard form. I'll show you this general form. It looks like this, x squared plus y squared. This is the general form of a circle. Plus dx plus ey plus f, fun, right? Okay, and d, e, and f, those are just numbers. So those are just real numbers. All right, so look at this problem. X squared plus Y squared, so that is a circle, plus 4X plus 6Y minus 23 equals zero. So that's in general form. They want us to write this in standard form. So this is easier than it looks, watch. Put the this together and leave a space. You're going to put the Y's together and leave a space, and you're going to add 23 to both sides. Now, do you guys remember when we completed the square? So all we're going to do is complete the square twice. So we're going to take half of 4, which is 2, and square it. So we're going to put the 4 there, and we have to add a 4 there. Then you're going to take half of negative six, which is negative three, and square it. So when you add nine, you add nine there. And guess what? 
we can write the we can write the standard form of a circle. Watch this. So remember, this would be x plus quantity squared. This one's going to be y minus three squared, and this is thirteen plus twenty-three is thirty-six. And look at that. In one step, we wrote the equation of the circle in standard form. All right. So from this, we can get the center. We can get the radius and we can graph. So the center, now remember this is X minus two. So this would be left two up three. And the radius is not 36. If the radius squared is 36, can you see this? So we take the square root of both sides and we get R is equal to plus or minus six, which is a length. Can you guys see my screen or no? Can you shift it a little bit to the left, please? To the left? Or to your right, I think. No, can you can you see what I've written? Well, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's what I've written. And now we're gonna do the graph. And you can see this, right? So the center is the most important, right? Otherwise your whole graph's gonna be wrong. It's left two up three. And this part's easy. You just go up six, right six down. So let's do that. So let's go right six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Down six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Left six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And up six, one, two. There's your circle. And like I said, they might ask for the domain and range. So what's the domain here? I'll wait for you. Uh, negative six, four. Uh, nope, close though. It's not negative six. It is something four though. It's not negative six though. What is what is from negative two? Negative eight. What's the range? Go ahead. What's the range? Up and down. Where does it exist? Negative, negative three. Uh-huh, up to what? Up to? Nine. Yeah, good job. Who's that, Andres? Good job. Okay, that is the lesson, ladies and gentlemen. So that is lesson um, one eight, one nine, one nine. That's a little bit, this lesson's a little bit easier than things we've done in the past, if you know some of the um, concepts that we've done in the past. So this general form is, re is requiring you to complete the square twice. And once you complete it twice, you get the equation of the circle in standard form. And from there, you can get the center, you can get the radius, and you can graph the circle. All right, now class is over in about Five minutes. Um, anybody want to ask me any questions about anything? Anybody need me to go over anything?
No? Uh, can you explain the, um, the distribution of the example you just did? Uh, what do you want me to explain right here? This? Yeah. Remember when we completed the square? Remember when we took a trinomial and made it the square, uh, a binomial square? Do you remember when we did that? Yeah. I'm taking half term, which is two, and I'm squaring it. This number, you add to both sides in blue. And to write the binomial square, you write this number. So if you multiply this out, x plus two, two, you're going to get the trinomial. These are equal. Same thing over here. If you take half a negative six, that's negative three. So add to both sides, and you're going to put the negative three there. And if you FOIL this, y minus three times y minus three, it's going to give you the trinomial. So this binomial square is equal to the trinomial. And by completing the square twice in blue and orange, you can write the equation of the circle. Do you understand what I'm saying, Mark, or no? Do you remember this? Yeah, I kind of understand what you're saying. So just remember, um, if I add four to this side, you have to add four to the other side. If you add to something, you have to add nine. So that's why you're seeing me. I'm putting blue on both sides, orange on both sides. The important thing to remember here is that this binomial square when you multiply x plus 2 times x plus 2, it's going to give you this trinomial. Yes? Yeah. yeah. OK, Thanks. can you guys unmute yourself, please? Even if you forgot or what, that you know what I'm talking about, you can figure it out on your own. Can you guys unmute yourself and tell me, yes, you can, you can figure this out. You remember us doing this. Yeah, I got yeah. it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay. I got it. Okay, you guys are great. All right. Hey, listen, oh, have a great day. I know we're done a couple minutes early. Um, you're welcome to hang out with me and ask me a question if you want, but otherwise I'm going to let everybody else go. So you guys have a good day. I have not posted the assignment yet because I wasn't sure if I get through the lesson. So I do have it done. Um, so I will be posting it today so you can get started on um, lesson one nine. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Okay. Have a good day.